which the courtyard is still, it's still there. They're using it for outdoor dining right now. Yeah. Um, and so I sat down with Michael and Olivia there, had a great interview, talked to them about, you know, what I wanted to do. It's crazy to think about what I had told them my goal in life was and what it is now. Yeah. Um, I think my goal at the time was, you know, to be a, a beverage director at a three Michelin star restaurant. And now all I want is to have a farm in the middle of nowhere and never talk to anyone again. For sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, but it was it went very well they asked me to come back asked if i could stay for the afternoon um went and watched part of dinner service was with them in menu meeting um i was able to shadow actually um a gentleman named eric jefferson who is now the general manager oh, of shit, La yeah, yeah and his his woman um angela, angela. right yeah mm-hmm. she works for shaoxing or used to. She did. Yeah, yeah, Now yeah. she's at, I forget which winery she's at now. Yeah. She, she did work for... That's um, a badass Georgia. couple. Yeah. Angela, Angela. Shout out to you. Yeah. yeah they're great. Sure. They're very, very sweet. Yeah. Um, and she was always so friendly and kind. Uh, but yeah, Eric, you know, he, he didn't sugarcoat things. And you knew, I knew at that moment that I met him, even though he was still a food runner at the time, like he was a lifer. Yeah. You know, he was someone I knew I could learn a lot from. And so I felt, you know, I felt special having that connection yeah for sure no um but yeah it was it that was that was really really wonderful and then we're going through and we we were lining plates before service and um he was he was you know focusing on the small detail of this pattern in a plate that you could barely see needs to be lined up with the pattern in the underliner and and uh (laughs) it was it was just a a whole new world and i was just mesmerized i was like i love i'm a little ocd myself so i love the attention to detail yeah um yeah it was it was very special and it just drew me in yeah that's funny you said the marking on the plate that you can't really see because i had a chef chef jake would always be like uh, I'm like, where are we plating this? He's like, I'll oh, put the put the meat on the little uh, dibbit there on the plate. Mm-hmm. And you're like, what? And he's like, what? Yeah. And then he's like, look at it. And I was like, I'm looking at it. And then he finally like picks up the plate and puts it in the light. And I'm like, how am I supposed to see that? And then you're like putting it in the fucking light, you know? But thanks right. to him, man, I like when I was at Charter Oak, I'd see things from a mile away, mm-hmm. like on a plate. But like, nope, bring that back, right. you know? Right. Um. And then you, when you started there, mm-hmm. um, started as food runner. How long did it take you to move up? Uh, you know, I I never did. You know, I stayed no, as food runner. I stayed okay, that, I stayed as that position the whole time. How I was long there. did you stay at the laundry total? About a year. Okay, why did you leave? Um, I I left because there was a a very like high school kind of clicky. Um, attitude with a lot of a lot of the women there i i don't mean to say you know i think that's gonna happen at any any three missions for sure yeah yeah, yeah. um and i I met a lot of really really beautiful people while i was there that i am still close with and um you know i i don't think a, a lot of and i shouldn't say i shouldn't say a lot of people um had this attitude i think there were a few people that kind of like dominated the conversation um, mm-hmm. And not that I was tricking myself into believing I had any sort of voice that would, you know, point this insanely established restaurant in one direction or the other. But I I was hoping to be part of more of a family. Yeah, yeah. And that just wasn't that just wasn't how it was. Yeah. You know, in 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 the search of perfection, it's not you know it's not about making friends. No, no, it's really not. It's not. No, I hear you. And so I think I I wanted to be that person that could thrive there, but in reality, that's just it's not me. I well, mean, I brought cookies on my first official day. Yeah, well, it's not it's not for everybody, yeah. you know. And um, the fact is, you were mature enough to realize that on your own. Mm-hmm. It's like people sometimes in that situation will just stay there, be unhappy, and then get fired. Right. And it's like you chose that. Yeah. When you could have easily just been like, hey been the bigger person be like ah this isn't for me you know Mm -hmm. so did you have a plan yeah my goal the whole time i was in napa my goal was to just like stay in napa okay and i didn't and i wanted to eventually make wine i found that idea really exciting and that kind of played off the love that i had for you know that that tradition and story behind wine yeah that really got me into it in the first place 
So during my time at the French Laundry, actually on those two days off that I had, I worked in the tasting room at a winery. So I had no days off. Uh, so I did that and I had a great relationship with them. When I left the laundry, I positioned it. So I said, Hey, can I come on full time and do the tasting room? They said, absolutely. We'd love to have you. So I did that for full time for a little bit. Um, and then I wanted to use that as a way to then apply for an intern position in the winery for production. Um, so I applied, I said, Hey, I, I don't know anything other than what I've studied in my psalm books. I want to be hands-on. I want to learn how, how this is happening. You know, I think that's really important. And, and I had just already established this great relationship and they said we would, you know, come and interview, but honestly we'd love to have you. And I was on the winemaking team in 2017 and that was, it was a life changing experience. And now we've actually had that, that winery group. Um, it's a winery called Odette, which is part of the Plump Jack group. Odette. Odette. That's my man. Who owns that? What's his name? So it's, it's Gordon Getty and Gavin Newsom. Oh, no, no, no. I'm talking about. There's another guy who runs it. Uh, you yeah, he used to come into Charter Oak all the time. Yeah, what the uh, fuck John is Conover. His... John Conover, yep. the man. So yeah, he's bro, great. he let me park my the shittiest car you've ever seen in your life on his property nice. at Odette, Perfect. literally in the tasting room. So you're sitting there, nice. You came on your nice vacation, and you're sitting there sipping wine, and then you look over, and there's just this eyesore, like no. right in the no. It was it was. I bought it from a guy who okay. let his kids pick the paint color, right? Oh, great. So it was avocado green. Okay. Right? And just a shitty 1992 Honda Accord. Oh, no. Just the shittiest car, right? Um, ended up actually flipping it into the woods on Silverado Trail trying oh, to shit. avoid a deer. Yeah. Life-changing moment. Like, yeah. Because I, I went off course oh. and... Uh, Basically, I, my car was grinding on the side when I swerved out of the way. And then when I adjusted to get back on the road, my foot was still on the gas, right? Because everything's happening so quickly. Yeah, yeah. Boom! Launched right into the oh, woods. Fuck. But the craziest part was that I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, and that's what fucking saved me. Really? Yeah. I The car spun around around me, right? And I'm just l- sitting there looking at the steering wheel, the Toyota sign on the steering wheel. Everything's said and done. I'm sitting on my windshield. The car is completely upside down. I basically stayed in the same position while yeah. the car flipped. I'm a fucking big dude. I'm 6'2". Right. You know? And not one part of my body got caught anywhere that would have changed that. Was I was like, someone's watching over me. Someone's got my back. Insane. You know? And it really it, it changed my, it changed my life. Yeah. And during that time... I hung out with Tyler a lot, you mm-hmm. know, and he was expediting over there at the laundry. And, um, you know, I had yet to meet you, but, mm-hmm. you know, anyway, where the hell were we? I don't know. Uh, before the car crash. Uh, we were talking about cars. We were talking about your uh, time Odette. at the laundry. Ah, uh, Odette, John yep. Conover, yep. the man. So I worked with leave his car, yeah. Katie um, oh! in the tasting room. Okay. Uh, such a sweetheart. Um, but funny enough, I when we started Truffle Shuffle, we are reaching out to wineries to say, hey, like, we'd love to do this for your members. I know yeah. they can't come and taste right now. I reached out to John, and he said, yeah, let's get something set up. Let's do it. We tried it out first for Cade. Now we've done multiple Cade events, multiple Plump Jack events, multiple Odette events, yeah. uh, and just kind of, like, cycled through that and, and you know, keep, keep giving their members this awesome experience through Truffle Shuffle, and the, actually, assistant winemaker that was there when I worked with him, his name's Adrian Halpin. He's at Hourglass now. We just recently did an event with them too so yeah. it's everything just kind of kind of you know coming back and truffle shuffle being able to you know touch on a lot of people that supported me and now you know i want to be kind of that conduit to help support them too that is cool i mean you turn around and say okay now i got my own company yeah now you come work for me come, come on, <laughs> let's do something i love that uh but that yeah so i after after the laundry I, I went and worked at odette um in between working in the tasting room and working in production jason and i actually went out and worked for a gentleman named mitch rouse okay on his ranch in wyoming heard that so we were there for for a season which is basically about six months and we were private chefing right outside of cody wyoming on the most beautiful ranch that you can ever imagine it's you know, about 500 acres. Uh, we're cooking 
outside every day, barbecuing, being able to come up with whatever we want, experimenting with things behind the bar. Basically, this this gentleman was just whatever we wanted to do, he was in full support of it. And now we're fortunate enough to call him our largest investor in Truffle Shuffle and a, a true and dear, dear friend. I mean, I got to know him really well. Yeah. His, pers- his personal chef right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, we called in Dave. I mean, yeah, they were like, hey. Send in the wolf. It's like I got you. <laughs> um, so let's backtrack a little bit. Yeah. You and Jason. Yeah. How did that all happen? Um. So obviously, I did not want to be the girl that starts working at the restaurant and then immediately gets into a relationship. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No. 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 One Nobody wants, wants to be that. But you can't deny love, baby. That's ultimately kind of what I decided. Yeah. So I remember talking to my mom, and she. You know, she and I have have gotten like much closer over the years. She yeah. was actually she took me to my first AA meeting. She helped me move up to Napa when I came up here, and um, she bought me. I was so I was so broke when I moved up here. After paying rent, she bought me a bag of apples and peanut butter and bread <laughs> to like suffice me for like two weeks until my first paycheck. I was like, I was like, Mom, can you just buy me like some groceries? And she's like, Yeah, yeah. That's sure. awesome. Um. But anyway, so I, I remember talking to my mom on the phone and saying, like, yeah, everything's going great, but I just I just had this guy ask me out, and the way that Jason went about asking me out, he he and I had made, like, small chit-chat because plates at the French Laundry live in a lot of different places. Yeah, so yeah, they're yeah. wrapped up, or if there's something you routinely use, they live in a certain station during the night. And then so he's like, hey, I need this day. plate. Yeah, kind of. Uh, so <laughs> he thinks I just wanted to keep talking to him yeah. and was putting the plates away in his station, but in reality, it's like the only station I felt confident I like knew exactly where they oh, were Oh, okay, going. gotcha, so gotcha, I gotcha. I being like, well, I'll do the fish station. Like, I'm yeah, not yeah. that. I'll just do that one in my first couple weeks there. And... So as I'm, like, putting all these plates away, we're chit-chatting, things like that. And then one day he tells me, he's like, hey, you look like you need someone to show you around town. Like, super cheesy line, right? And yeah. Yountville is literally two blocks, so <laughs> you can't figure out how to get around town. Because I'm kind of in I saw it on the way in. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. Uh, and so I, I was a little hesitant at first, but then I did, I did like him and thought he was so sweet, even though I thought his name was John for like the first week wow it's really bad john. john like john yeah like the guy from Georgia. yeah don mckinney the ceo yeah. of Truffle. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and then people are like do you mean jason I'm yeah like, oh shit is that it okay. dude i've done that all the time jason. i had a chef named farrell i thought his name was farley for like oh. six months <laughs> and i'm like oh i love chef farley and they're like oh. who the fuck is chef farley <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Chef Errol. <laughs> but um, after after Jason asked me at the end of the shift that night, I finally agreed. I said, "Okay, I'll." Yes, I, that sounds great. Yeah, you, you can call me, and I like slipped in my number, and then I'm chatting with my mom like the day after, and she's like, "What are you doing this weekend?" I'm just like, "Oh, this this guy, this friend from work, he wanted to hang out." And she's like, "Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Like, you know, you know, you just got out of this relationship, yeah. and I'm like, no, but I think." I think there's something special. And I remember telling her this. I thought, said, I think, I think, I think I have to do this. I don't want to miss out on like getting to know this person. Yeah. And so something inside me just said, you need to, you need to just do this. And so we went on our first date and. Where'd you go? Okay. This is going to be like great and horrible. (laughs) (laughs) In in true Uh, Jason McKinney fashion. I love this. I can only, I can only imagine. Um, we went to, so one thing a lot of people don't know about Yachtville is uh-huh. there's a pack of wild longhorns that live uh, Excuse me? along the hills. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know, right? No! Yeah. What the fuck like is that? Like wild longhorn cattle. <laughs> and so we had a whole bunch of apples and we went up to this one place. They're usually, they kind of like uh, roam over this hill throughout yeah. the day. And so at a certain time, you know, they'll be in a certain area. And so we go back and it's like late afternoon and Jason's got this this big thing of apples. I'm like, what are we doing with the apples? So he's showing you this for the first time. Yeah. Okay. And he's like, you'll see. You'll see. I'm like, okay. And so of course we get you married truck. him. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna marry this guy after I hear this story. <laughs> <laughs> we get in his truck and we head down and we see these cattle. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And he's like, yeah, we're gonna feed them. And so we feed them all these apples, and they're so sweet, and, you know, they're obviously wild animals, but they're huge, but they're these gentle giants, so we're feeding the cattle all these apples, and that's great, and 
totally up my alley, something I'd love to do. And then he's like, okay, let's go get lunch. And so where do we go get lunch? Of all the wonderful places that exist in Yachtville, we go to 